We have so much to break down in this video. We are going to jump right into it. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. Here's what you're going to find in this video. Chapters are going to be in the description so you can bounce around, although I'd like you to watch the whole thing. The first thing, we are going to be pinpointing two tropical waves, one of them already in the Caribbean. Another one is on route, and there could be another one even behind that. We're going to break that all down to the model forecast. Then we're going to talk about the conditions of the atmosphere and of the sea surface temperatures. Will these waves develop? And then we'll round it out with the latest on the largest Saharan dust surge we have seen so far this season. Before we do jump right into this video, if you want to stay updated on the tropics and the rest of hurricane season and the weather in general, hit that subscribe button for me. Let me know where you're tuning in from and uh, post in the comments if you have any questions. So here is Tropical Wave 1. This is officially designated as Invest 94L. Remember, that just means area of investigation. It's just something that the Hurricane Center wants to know more about about so they tag it as an invest so they run their hurricane models on them and they also start to make a plan for hurricane hunters to start investigating so here we go this little blob here of clouds of rain and thunderstorms is uh, hanging out just south of the dominican republic in haiti right now still pretty hostile i'll show you those conditions in a little bit hostile for the storm meaning that it's likely not going to develop in the short term but that is why this yellow shaded area closer to the yucatan closer to belize and then in this extreme southwest gulf of mexico bay of campeche that is why that area is highlighted because once that wave gets into that region it will have a little bit better of an environment for it to develop so that is wave number one another juicy wave sliding off of africa over the last couple of days you see it right there blossoming thunderstorm activity with it now you can clearly see here those white lines on your screen that is the wind direction so this is what we're talking about a tropical wave because when we're breaking down a tropical cyclone it's a closed center like that you see that counterclockwise motion but a wave note this wind pattern here how it comes in it goes up like an upside down or like it uh, upside down you just like that and then out like that so that is what we mean by having it's an open wave as it continues to work to the west closer to the caribbean islands here is the development zone again that's going to be the area where the conditions could support some tropical development now there is some dust in this region the water temperatures are super warm as i'll show you but it's also some stronger train winds in there so it's still uncertain as to if these waves are actually going to develop in terms of the probability what i'm showing you here is the percentage of the european ensembles suggesting tropical development so there's 51 members in this and these ensembles we talk about ensemble forecasting all the time that just like a band a band ensemble each member makes up the ensemble so there's 51 members so when you see the colors pop up here that means as we get into that teal ish color that greenish color that 30 percent of the 51 members are hinting at some tropical storm development with invest 94 l that's currently in the eastern caribbean and will likely get into the western caribbean and southwest gulf of mexico i'll, I'll show you the actual model uh, forecast for that in just one second now with that secondary wave coming through we have about the same probability 30 to 40 percent of the ensemble members are suggesting that this could be a tropical storm we're going to have this uh, probability set for tropical storm force uh, system here sliding on through I will say that watching these things last year the ensembles certainly have been more aggressive than the operational over the last 6 to 12 hours, though, some of the operational models are starting to hint at some tropical development as well. So that is trending in that direction uh, for some development. I will also say you see that little spike that they kind of we played right on through there, still keeping it at 30 to 40 percent uh, tropical storm formation probability. This is something that we call the tropical graveyard in the eastern Caribbean. It's very seldom that we do have a tropical system develop in the Eastern Caribbean. We have the stronger trade winds sliding through, so we typically have increased wind shear in this area. The Western Caribbean is a much more area favorable for development, climatologically speaking, but something that we are going to watch when we get a signal that's strong. So that is the percentage of the ensembles that are highlighting development. Now I want to show you the actual models. We're going to break down the GFS and the European actual operational forecast here so this is going to be where we stand today this is going to be at 11 o'clock on uh wednesday as we approach lunchtime as we get into the weekend 
Note the flare up here. That disturbance kind of went through Belize and then getting into the Bay of Campeche area and kind of working its way back into Mexico. As we saw, though, the probabilities of that system really wide ranging from about South Texas to the eastern half of Mexico, kind of where the last two disturbances have gone. Alberto and then that entity that thankfully never really developed but still brought us uh, some heavy rain. So now we'll focus our attention again back to the central Atlantic into that main development region. The GFS is being pretty aggressive with development here. A strong tropical uh, tropical storm strength system. You see that yellow area there, the counterclockwise winds as it would kind of move to the east of Trinidad and Tobago and parts of the Windward Islands. That's going to be into the Sunday, Monday time frame. If, again, it develops, there's still some question as to how strong that thing is going to get and what we could be looking at uh, late into the weekend or early next week. So playing that three for you there, uh, south of Puerto Rico, we still have something in there remembering that, again, climatology would argue against something strong, especially in the Eastern Caribbean as we get into July. But I mentioned earlier in the video that uh, some models, model guidance is developing a secondary system rolling off of Africa. Again, this is pretty atypical for the end of June and start of July. We start to look into the main development region once we get deeper in July, but really we don't start seeing these uh, juicy waves like we've been dealing with over the past couple of weeks right off of Africa until we get into August and really in the middle of August. That's that Cabo Verde season that we always talk about uh, as those waves eject off of the African plateau and then work their way towards the Cabo Verde Islands. So there are those systems there as uh, forecasts from the GFS model. Now we're going to look at the European model and then we're going to get into some of the climate and we're going to get into some of the actual environment to diagnose if these things are actually going to have the opportunity to develop. So same kind of deal here. You see that broad spin coming through. So the Euro and the GFS do not get this thing strong at all coming through Central America. We're back on Invest 94L. I know we're bouncing all over the place, but almost tis the season till we're kind of dissecting a bunch of waves at once. But note the darker oranges, yellows, and reds in there. That's some very, very heavy rain. So regardless of development, it does appear likely that in the same areas that were impacted by Tropical Storm Alberto will be impacted again by at least some very heavy rain. But the potential for a tropical depression or tropical storm also going to be on the table as we get into the upcoming weekend. Going back out into the eastern Atlantic now, the European wants to keep this entity, this latest tropical wave on the weaker side so i mentioned before the modeling does have kind of a quasi closed center right in through there but still it's mainly an open wave and again if we're going to get something to impact the islands we'd like it to be on the weaker side obviously and be uh that open wave so we just get some beneficial rain i know it's been hot it's been dusty with the saharan dust so we'll take some beneficial rain but we obviously don't want anything too strong uh coming through the windward islands into trinidad and tobago so we're going to take this again and the european keeping this on the weaker side still you see the winds coming through here that is an open wave so we don't have a tropical cyclone at this point but but the European is on board for that secondary system, just like what the GFS had, still an open wave, but some very heavy rain, again, pushing towards the Windward Islands and, the, uh, and Trinidad and Tobago as we get into early next week. So something to be mindful of if you're watching from the Lesser Antilles and the Eastern Caribbean, that there could be a little something-something trying to develop. Still a question as to what it's going to be at this point. Um, but certainly we have some tropical shenanigans going on. I want to show you this product here. This is our tropical index, and it kind of takes all of the ingredients, uh, both positive and negative, for tropical development. It puts it all together, and we get these colors to show up. So it's taking wind shear, or lack thereof, and it's taking a water temperature, and it's taking moisture in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, putting it all together, and then giving us this very colorful plot. So what we're focused on here is if it's green or yellow, that means eh, the environment isn't that favorable for tropical development. So we like that. If it's that peachy color or red, that means we're starting to get into that more favorable category. So as we stand on Wednesday, we have some dry, dusty air in play from the Saharan Desert, and we're going to break that down in just a couple of minutes. But note that we have the yellows and green right where we have 94L. So this tropical index model doing a very good job, again, not suggesting development of the wave uh, because we don't have 
a very good environment, uh, conducive again. We have the the stronger trade trade winds right now, and we also have uh, the dry, dusty air around. Now, once we get into the weekend, we have that lower favorability for areas east of the Lesser Antilles, but then watch what happens as we get into the weekend. So Monday into Tuesday, we see this peach and red color pop up east of the Lesser Antilles and into the Eastern Caribbean, where those other two tropical waves that we identified will be traveling through. So we're going to get in depth as to what would be fueling the uh, what would be fueling this signal to turn red over the next couple of minutes. But before we get into that, I do want to let you guys in on another way that you can stay up to date on the tropics without the fear and without the height, but with sound science and meteorology, kind of like what we are doing right now. Scan that QR code on the screen, and if you happen to be on your phone, head to clickorlando.com slash newsletters. There you can find the Tropics Watch newsletter. I visit your inbox every Monday, and as needed, we also have have a live stream on this channel every Monday at 11 o'clock Eastern time and you can kind of submit your questions we can have the live chat and all that stuff so if you do want to have another way to stay updated on the tropics again this is on every Monday and as necessary so if there's something coming your way I'll also visit your inbox if you have any questions of course you can post those in the comments. I'm super active in the comment section on YouTube. You can also hit me up on Twitter. There's Facebook, of course. If you're on the YouTube channel, you know what the handle is. There's the Instagram. And if you want to go through the email route, you can also hit me up uh, on the email side as well if you have any questions. I'm super responsive to that. And again, want to make sure that you guys know that we are here for you and we're breaking things down if you have any questions. All right. So thanks for listening to that. Here we go with kind of the ingredient section of this video. Water temperature, we've been talking about this for months. It's August-like at the end of June and early July, so not good. We're going to take our little dabber here, and we're going to look at the anomalies. This is going to be in Celsius, anywhere from 1 to almost 2 degrees uh, Celsius above normal. In Fahrenheit, that's going to be closer to 5 to 6 degrees above normal, so giving you an in Fahrenheit perspective. So this is juiced. Again, it is August-like. So in terms of favorability for development, the water temperature, unfortunately, check. Now, the one thing right now that we don't have going for uh, development, thankfully, is that dry, dusty air. So the water vapor is picking up on the drier air that is in play through a lot of the main development region. Here are the Lesser Antilles, uh, right over here where you see my mouse. There is Invest 94L in the green, just south of Hispaniola. And then here is our latest disturbance, a little bit closer to Africa. My Telestrator won't turn back on for some reason, but there's my mouse going crazy over there, if you can kind of see it. All of that orange and brown, that is some of the drier air partially related to the Saharan air layer, the Saharan dust, that we've been talking about uh, on this channel for quite some time. So what I want to do is I want to show you where currently that dust is. So if I get my Telestrator back on, there is 94L, here is our other disturbance, and then we're really focused on this dark brown color through parts of the Dominican Republic, extending through the Lesser Antilles into the Greater Antilles. That is some big time dry, dusty air that these waves are going to have to fight. So again, this isn't a slam dunk that we do get all these waves to develop right now. If it was August, I'd be super concerned. We already have the water temperature August-like, but still we have uh, some negative some negative things working against development at this time. So that's where we stand currently for the Saharan dust. I want to show you something here. This is going to be the model forecast in play as we uh, watch it kind of pinwheel. You're going to note that the model catches up on the spin of any kind of tropical system that develops coming up in just one second. But there is some of that dry or dusty air uh, going into Jamaica, going into Cuba, maybe even working its way into Florida. We have more, another surge coming through the Lesser Antilles into Puerto Rico, uh, into the Virgin Islands. And then you see that little spiral right here. It's picking up on that system. There's Monday at 10 o'clock at night. The one thing I'm going to say, though, is if this holds... That means that there is going to be another battle going on between that system coming towards us in the Lesser Antilles and that drier air. And if it were to ingest some of that drier air into the center, it's going to be hard for it 
to develop. So the point I'm trying to make is if you are watching us from the Eastern Caribbean and if you're watching us from the Lesser Antilles in Trinidad and Tobago, it's something to be watching, but there will be ingredients detrimental to the development of these waves. So just be careful what you see on social media. Uh, some models want to put it strong, but as we all know, last year, a lot of those models really wanted to ramp up development prior to the Lesser Antilles, and thankfully, uh, we just did not see that. So I'm going to get ready to wrap this up because I've been rambling on for a long time. And thank you guys to uh, uh, that are still sitting through this. I hope you find this informative and aren't too bored. If you're still with me, hit that thumbs up button. But I want to show you the, some of the steering currents. This is going to be the surface pressure now. Where we see the blue color, that is high pressure. Where we see the red color, that is low pressure. So this is our big Bermuda Azores high anchored over the Atlantic and when you see it dark blue and when you see it expansive that means we have a greater opportunity to get these waves to enter the Caribbean now if you watch some of our preseason videos kind of highlighting the season we talked about that this was likely going to be unfortunately a busy year for the Caribbean so here we go Saturday afternoon five o'clock this is the upcoming Saturday note all the blue here so we have a very strong chunk of high pressure focused and centered right over through uh, the main development region of the Atlantic we have high pressure building through the southeast corner uh, southwest Atlantic as well and then note our little red area popping up it's not too it's not too red so again it's on the weaker side but we're focused on that for our steering currents to slide on through let me go back as we uh kind of worked our way through that but nonetheless that's going to be our um area of low pressure uh that kind of pushes its way from the atlantic or from uh the central atlantic into the islands and the point i'm trying to make with this is that with this big chunk of high pressure kind of anchored right there it's going to have a tendency to uh, slide back in so there's our little system and it's going to have again the it's going to want to go west unfortunately rather than be flung out i don't really see a weakness in that ridge as we move into the weekend all righty guys we have you covered here if you found this informative uh click that thumbs up button i would appreciate that uh hit that subscribe button as well and again just a reminder, if you want to stay updated on the tropics, again, hit that subscribe button. But we also have the Tropics Watch newsletter. And again, hit me up on all of the social media stuff. Again, that's where you can find me. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions and to continue uh, this weather conversation elsewhere. Until then, guys, hit that subscribe button. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from. And we will catch you next time.